Okay, you have to understand this is not the hour to play around. This is the hour to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Jesus made it clear in John chapter 4, verse number 23 to 24. He said, I came to seek worshipers. So God is not looking for talent. He can make a donkey sing right. God can make anything sing right. He can choose a donkey and He can prophesy through a donkey. He is looking for people that will worship Him with everything that they have. People that will dance like David danced. People that will play that timbrel like Miriam played that triple. He is looking for a people that will once again say, Worthy is the Lamb of God who are slain. Worthy are you, Jesus the Christ, the one and only. Not a way, the way. Not a truth, the truth. Not a begotten, the begotten. You know, the posture of your worship is the attitude of your heart. And so if we want to teach this generation anything, we need to teach them to worship right. Can I say that as the father of the house? Don't come here and play, make jokes. This is a holy place where we come to set people free, to introduce them to Jesus Christ. I say that without any excuse. This is my house. There's blood on this pulpit that belongs to me and the father that was before me. But don't come and play jokes here. Are you, is that okay? Let's worship Jesus. Let's sanctify this place. Let's exalt the name. So tell your jokes outside, but as we come into the house of the Lord, we worship the Lord. We lift up our hands, O holy people. We give Him a shout of praise. Okay, saying that I feel a little bit better, but I just want to put, the Bible says, the house of God shall be a house of order. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. And so sometimes I need to say these things as a father of the house just to set the temperature right in the spirit. He's worthy to be worshipped. One day you're going to stand in front of Him Oh, with all of His majesty, His power, His significance, his, all of His might, all of His angels, all of those that went before Him. He's going to stand there and you're going to stand there and you'll have to recognize that He's God. And there's not going to be an option to bow the knee. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And so right now He's looking for a people that are full of the Holy Spirit and with fire. Not a people that are backslidden, playing with the world, one foot here, one foot there. No, he's looking for a people that are on fire for him, that know his word, that knows his spirit, and that walk upright like they God. We are called to live in a time, an unusual time. Nonetheless, God has called us to be an unusual, peculiar, set-aside people in this hour. We cannot look like the world. We can dress like them, smile like them, but we're nothing. We have nothing in common. We are here to save a world with a message from Jesus Christ Himself. What is the message? The message is you can be saved, you can be healed, you can be restored, you can be redeemed, you can be oppression free, you can be devil free, you can be sickness free, you can be whole now and forevermore. Your family can be saved, your life can be touched, your future can be secured freely have received freely give this is not a cheap message it's a message bought by the blood are you there come on in power do i have somebody here with me tonight that understands what i'm saying that it's not just a somebody it's the king of kings and the lord of lords it's the great i am it's the lion of the tribe of judah that we're talking about the same god the same god of jacob the same god of moses same God of Samson, same God heals, restores, sets free. He says, watch and pray. Come on, are you, are you with me? Your response tonight is going to set you free. It's going to help you. Let me teach you something. The response is everything uh, when it comes to the kingdom of God. God will do nothing for those that sit. He can pass us by and we can be watchers. Do you know that when you go to a soccer field, you get thousands of experts in the stadium, yet only a few that play the game. And one guy that's calling the shots is called the referee. Do you know that none of the people in the stands, none of their opinions matter except the guy that's got the referee uh, jacket on. There's one referee in the whole of scripture and his name is the Holy Spirit. And unless we please Him, we're not going to play this game successfully. And so I want us to understand that there's a, there's a holiness and that's why, you know, um, you should, be, you should be, feel very safe in a house where there's open rebuke. The Bible says better is an open rebu a rebuke than many secret kisses from the devil. I would rather get an open rebuke than a, a thousand smooches from Satan. Because he that sins in secret dies in secret. And so I want to encourage you tonight in power church. Let me love you as your father. Let me encourage you. When you come here, come and worship the Lord. When you come here, come and praise Jesus. We put way too much energy and uh, everything else into it to have average worship. No, we worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
Like we worship Him this morning. We worship Him with everything we have. Why? He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be. And may I just say this? We have to sing the songs that glorify the Lord. Tell Him who He is. He likes it. What is worship, by the way? Worship is the song He wants to, to be sang, which He creates he puts in the heart of man and man worships it back to him. Okay, so Jesus wants worshipers. So better in a, in a moment like this that, you know, again I say, in a, as better is it that we speak like I speak tonight and I say to you, let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth because he's come to seek worshipers. Do you know that preaching is going to fail? Prophecy is going to fail, but worship will go forever.